down inside of here. There's an o ring. Need to replace that. that all up really well. There's a check ball down in there. You also need to make sure that that's nice and free. Check ball in here, make sure it's moving around nice and free. Our forward piston. may have to do this off a of camera just on a flat surface there we go there are turn springs just put our piston down inside of here we want that lined up there this here is going to go in here this is going to go in there. Kind of hold up on it. Run your lip seal tool around the center. And just kind of gently let that lower. And once you get it started, you should be able to push it down. And of course it wants to be a pain since we're on camera. Come on now. There we go. Our overrun piston has a chick ball in it also. If your snap ring gets a little bent out of shape, just give it a few taps and it'll bend it back in. Look at the uh, tips of your snap ring. There's a shorter end of the taper. You want the short end up towards you. Our return spring is going to sit in just like that.
and inside of there goes this seal. The little ribs have to fit in those splines down there. This bearing here is going to sit just like that. Put your front sun gear, put one of these washers on, put the ribbed side down. your hub, your other race, and just kind of work the dogs in and kind of twist to the counterclockwise direction. It'll go down on there, put your other washer on, put your hub on the top, you want this snap ring. in the center there hold this hub should three wheel clockwise lock counterclockwise you want these steels there's my other one these two tabs are going to go on those two tabs got overrun clutches, two of them. We got our backing plate and it is 169,000. Got the cushion plate, 69,000. Steel, 86. Put your Sprague assembly in, and just alternate clutches and steels. All right, our pressure plate is. 223. We're looking for the edge of this plate to come right at the edge of that snap ring groove and that should be about perfect. I'm pretty close. You want the smaller of the two snap rings. You want at least one full lug on that edge of that snap ring. There, I like it. You want your snap ring right there. Three, four uh, bottom pressure plate has these legs and they're going to fit right there on the top of that supply piston. We're going to alternate clutches. The small tabs go in here. The wider tabs right here go in here. If you want to put the uh, return springs in there you can. I don't put them back except for on racing transmissions. We're right here again we're looking for that to end up right about the bottom of that snap ring groove. Looks about perfect. One full lug on our snap ring. Perfect. Alright. Don't normally change these. As long as my stator fits on there snug 
and it does. But uh, we'll go ahead and change them. <coughs> you can do it without a sizing tool and the expander. You just stretch them out by hand, run one down on each, go to the bottom one first, and resize it with a hose clamp. And then put your next one on, bring your hose clamp up, tighten it down, and just do that all the way up. And once you do that, slide your stator over it and it'll resize to your stator. Make sure that these two cup plugs are in there. I have seen them come out. Have only seen it one time. Uh, we've got our washer that goes on the bottom. Normally you can put a 70 in there. They normally come with a 68 or a 69. Somebody's already put a 71 in here, so we'll see how it comes out. We've got our bearing. This side faces up. sizing tool I got is originally made for 700s I mean the uh, expander so it won't go all the way down so I don't even bother to screw it down anymore I just uh, work them down by hand This is our speed sensor ring for our input speed sensor. It means all these ring lands have moved, so it takes a different pump. get an input speed sensor code it's more than likely not the input speed sensor it's usually the computer got these really small fiber looking wires they tend to break just keep working your sizing tool if you have one over it not just use that hose clamp Let that sit for just a second. And then I'll grease these up. And we'll let that sit until we're ready for it. Now look on this one, we're replacing the drum. You still need to look down in here and make sure this is not all heat up where that cushion plate goes because a lot of times all they do is resurface the outside of this and they never even look at the inside so you may still get a drum that's not right we want 
with the lip facing up towards us. two snap rings that are real close to each other, at least in size wise. The thinner one is for the low reverse, this one is for this drum. Short end of the taper up again. Alright, the cushion plate goes with the dish up normally. Uh, this one is still a used drum, so it's got some wear in there, not a whole lot, but enough that I'm going to flip this over. Now, they used to say you couldn't flip this thing over. It would cause problems, but trust me, it doesn't. I, every one of them I got out there has been flipped over, and I have no issues at all. Uh, so we're going with the dish down. And these are turbulated steels. Got the holes in them. And our clutches, we're just going to alternate until we get to the top. And our pressure plate, we want flat edge down, beveled up. And our snap ring. We got cushion plate and we got turbulated steels again. These are our clutches for that. So we'll just set these off until we're ready for them. piston. This is a flat lathe cut seal. All three of them. turn spring and then our snap ring short end of the taper is going to be up. Alright, you got a couple different style uh, planets for this. This one has a 135 thousandths deep pocket right there for the bearing. That uses this style of bearing. And 
and it's going to sit on this side of a hub instead of on the planet. You got four pinion and six pinion planets, or five pinion, I'm sorry. It's 88 thousandths to that ridge right there for that style bearing. <coughs> so our sun gear is already on the hub, so we'll just set this on top. We got this bearing that goes on top of that. Sunshell. Be a four tab plastic washer. Our center support snap ring. Our rear sun uh, planet something here. Our center support. Sprags turning clockwise, locking counterclockwise. It's going to go in there. This bearing sits on top. Rear ring gear. This bearing is going to sit on top of that. several different styles and configurations of the 1-2 accumulator. This one here is using a single spring. And it's inch 20 thousandths 939 139 I think I said that wrong. Okay, it's an inch, nine, nine thirty-nine, one thirty-nine. Spring goes in there. You can put the aluminum ones in here if you want. And then the accumulator sits on top like so. Alright, I'm going to have to get the pump apart and then we'll do the pump. Alright, we got a filter. Large O-ring goes on that. seal and our bushing already in. These feet gotta line up a certain way and this little tab needs to sit right there. <coughs> and in the back of here Have an O-ring and this little ring, metal ring. I reused the old 
rubber and the wiper that goes on here. I don't put the new ones in. I've had trouble with them being too tall and stick up too much, so I just reuse the old ones. You know, a little spring that goes in on your pivot pin. These pivot pins are pretty prone to wear, so keep an eye on them. This one only has one spring that goes on here. They do make a tool if you want to buy it. I just use a screwdriver. And since we're on camera, it's wanting to be an ass. Usually it pops right in there. I have a feeling it's going to come out on me. Here we go. Now if you're seeing silver coming in on here, uh, you need to start thinking about replacing it. Put your guide ring down. Put your guide ring down, put your plastic guide in, it only fits one way. If you're reusing your veins, you can see where the guide rings were riding, just put that back towards where they were. your other guide ring in. This passage right here. And this passage right here. <clears throat> Five thirteen millimeters. up band if you're really good at at it you can do it without the lineup band I used to do it a long time before I ever had one <coughs> he's got to feel and get the sides matched up otherwise it's gonna be very hard going in and you run the risk of messing your pump up. Input speed sensor, it's got an O-ring on it. Pop in right there. Eight millimeter holds it in. Pops 
in right there and right there make sure that those are on there if they are not you're going to want to buy you a new speed sensor and make sure it sits down in there otherwise it's going to come up and rub on the drum two tabs on our washer that down resize our ceiling rings here this is the same way usually I'm not replacing these these usually fit stuck <clears throat> snug enough same way you can stretch them out by hand put them on there and uh, use a hose clamp sit until we're ready for it all right the next to the largest ceiling ring that you have in your ceiling ring kit goes on this right here and it's uh, scarf cut so it goes together like so the long end facing inside the cover. Blue o-ring there, red o-ring here. You just find the right one for your servo on here. And it's scarf cut also. And it's too small. And then this goes on there. See if I got strong enough fingers to do it today. You got your cushion spring in here. This plate goes with this side up. Usually I put this in a foot press, but we'll see if I can do it right here. servo pin and notches determine how long it is you can adjust out your band clearance with that all right come on get in there the spring likes to collapse so make sure once you get this on there, that it's not, you can't just move your pin up and down. All right, the servo goes on. The largest ceiling ring you got in your kit is scarf cut also. You can put grease in this groove if need be to keep it up in there. Return spring always replaces. I don't know why some of these reman places are leaving this thing out. All right, here's our snap ring to hold that in. Once I get the case ready, we'll start 
stuff in this in the case. All right, you can actually drive the bushing in from the back side on this one because it's line board. But we're gonna go ahead and do it from the front. If your bushing has notches, notches are going to face up. If it has a split in the bushing where it's put together, do not put that split where that cutout is in the case over there. Put it away from that. Go in as straight as you possibly can. Go in just past the bevel. up your case and this camera is really right in my way so I may have to maneuver around this a little bit lube up your piston really good this little notch right here it's going to fit right down in the case right there. Careful not to cut your O-rings or return spring. Short end of the taper up again. Our spring compressor. Camera's right in the way. Trying to get this centered properly. Alright, I just started at the bottom. I don't use snap ring pliers to put it in, I just start it at the bottom and just pop it up over with the screwdriver. Since we're, our output shaft is still attached, it's easier to go ahead and put the planet on. Make sure your bearings on it, and set it all in at one time. We got our cushion plate with the notch. It's going to sit right there. And our steel with the notch. And just alternate up. Now, I've never had the low reverse not come out correct, so I don't know what would you need to do to make it come out correctly. Maybe a different center support with a different step to it. But, uh, like I said, I've never had it not come out right. We got our clunk springs going to sit right down in this spot right here in the case. Let's 
center support with the wide lug goes over here. Snap ring goes with the opening back here behind that spring. There's sun gear, four tab plastic washer, sun shell, ring gear, make sure the bearings on it. Make sure your bearing is either on that side or this side of the planet, depending on what bearing you got. Put your planet in. You can swap those five pinions out, uh, no problem. For the four pinions, you can go either direction, doesn't matter. Five pinions, of course, more heavy duty. Short end of the taper of your snap ring up. Come on now. The camera is right in the way. I may have to move this back so I can get to it. Alright, there we go. Yeah, I'll put my band in halfway, start it right there, let it hang just like that. Pull our resizing tool off of our input drum and put our reverse input drum on top. Our sun gear is in there and just set this down in there. Once it's all the way down, hold down on your reverse input, pull up on your input drum and it should move up and down. band down in the spot it's supposed to go in and put your band anchor in hold it in that spot right there all right since we replaced the reverse input drum I'm gonna go ahead and put the servo in now I normally don't do that but we need to make sure our band is not too loose since they resurfaced that band, it may be too loose. We'll put our whole servo assembly in. cover is back out against the snap ring and let's see if I got a longer pin let me go see if I got one and I'll be back all right I found one that was about 20 thousandths longer <clears throat> Go ahead and lube this up. Put your ring in. Lube that up a little bit. Put 
put your gasket in, line up all your holes. Now, since this uh, sizing tool has been off for so long, we may have to resize it again. I usually try to do it rather quickly. We'll see how it goes. Pull our sizing tool off of our pump. Line up our pump. And I'm off just a little bit. Try not to move my gasket. Alright, I think we're in there. Camera is right in the way. On the back of all these pump bolts, there's an no O-ring. Make sure you replace those. Go ahead and put my lockup O-ring on right now. Now with this style pump seal, let's see if I can do this without hitting the camera. We have to put the bell housing on first and tighten it down. There's two different style pump bolts depending on what gear you got. These are Torx 50 Plus. Uh, I forget what the other one is. It's a uh, MTS-4, looks like that. They come with a bit holder now. When I bought mine, they did not come with a bit holder, so that's why mine fell out. But of course, the bit holder is different for the bits that they have now, so it won't fit mine. your lineup bolt over here. Of course, I think I've already mentioned they're 13 millimeters on the pump itself. down and check my end play. Oh, I like it. It's very good. Put 
get this gasket off of here. Uh, some of you probably already freaking out that I'm cleaning gasket now. Go ahead and tighten down our park deal. 13 millimeters on it. All right, <clears throat> up in here, there's a cup plug. It's a check valve. They are prone to leaking. Here's a tool from uh, Tech Pack Fits All. Just put it on a slide hammer and uh, set it down in there to make a 90 degree turn and it'll pull it out. And this is the check ball. I take it out of here and I put it in the valve body. This is a cut plug. It's in every GM I think ever produced. I'll get you the number in the description and uh, that's what I use to plug this off. If you'll look in the side of your servo bore you'll see where there's a cutout about any wide. You want to drive this past that cutout into that next passage but don't drive it all the way through. So let's get you a punch make sure it started straight. Right there. And there's claims that that causes a bind up on a 3 2 kick down. I've never experienced it. I've done thousands of these things. I do this to every single tranny, always have. Take that check ball out of there and put that right there. Yeah, I always do this to my wiring harnesses because usually it breaks these tabs anyway when you're trying to get it out. I just put silicone around it, a really good grade of silicone. And it'll keep it in there as long as your R&R &R guy don't get radical trying to shove that connector on there. Put your pin in for your 3-4 accumulator. your accumulator in after you lube it up and your return spring and my separator plate where did it go yes check ball hole right here is usually beat up just buff it down till it's smooth actually you want to buff this side this is where it seats I do both sides uh, this side is not important this side is take your filters out of here I throw them away Use the same gaskets it's always used. The orange ones are for the bonded plate. The white ones are for the non-bonded, which is what we have. CA is for case. And VB is for valve body. And it goes on top. Two bolts. This is one lineup bolt right here. And your other one's right here. Alright, 
the TRD uses this plate we're going to put two bolts in here to line this up We have three eights that go right here. And a 27 Torx that goes right here. Alright, the TRD uses this gasket. Long tin right here. There's two shorter tins right here. Linkage loops in the S end of it loops in the right there, and then we'll do the valve body. And we'll be back for it. The aluminum accumulator in here, if you want to. I don't hardly ever do it. Put the pin in. Lube up your new D-shaped lip seal that goes on there. And this valve goes in. And our spring. Spring on our accumulator. Our cover. Three 8 millimeter bolts that hold this in. And I'm just going to wait and tighten this all down at one time. Shift solenoid. I always replace my shift solenoids. Clip to hold it in. The other shift solenoid. And this valve right here is very critical. I just take a brake hone small brake hone and get it in there and run it with my drill buff that out and then I take this and I get some very fine sandpaper 280s fine get this nice and free I got a wire brush I brush out the inside of it if this is hanging up this one's nice and free and just put that on there put our spring on the end of it to keep it centered put some grease on it and then lube the crap out of this thing. Can't have too much. 
you want to when you're putting this in there you want it to go nice and smooth if it uh, if it starts hanging up at all you're going to want to pull it back out and polish on that some more because once it's stuck you're probably going to break it trying to get it out and that roll pin goes through, I should have showed it to you, goes through the end of it there. It only, you have to clock it that one certain way, otherwise it's not going to be right. Now our EPC normally is facing this direction, and our bracket's going to be holding it right there, normally. Yeah. This time we're going to put it on this one over here. This is going to be facing up. in there you should be able to turn it just a little bit all right our manual valve goes in this hole right here oh one other thing I forgot to mention is before I do all this stuff, I got a drill bit. Doesn't matter what size it is, as long as it fits down inside that hole, just stick it in there and give it a little buzz. You just want to knock the edge of it off so that the ball sits just a little bit lower. Our 3-2 solenoid, got two O-rings on it. goes in from the front side and then on this valve here this is our normal setup we got that valve spring this valve here we're gonna take a quarter inch check ball come on now Put a little grease to help hold the ball and we're going to put one on each end of this and that's going to keep our valve blocked and it's going to help keep us from having the 1870 code so you're going to put it in just like that and our end plug and you're going to have to push on this pretty hard. There we go. Alright, spin that up. Go ahead and put our pressure switch manifold on the front here. Actually, get it facing the wrong direction. Two eight millimeters here. We're just going to leave that loose. Take our capsule. Give this a punch.
amazing how difficult everything wants to be when you put it on camera. Just amazing. There we go. Take that ball and put it right there. Got a ball here, 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 and here. Put some grease to hold all that in place. Make sure that they're in their right positions. Alright, let me change the camera position and we'll put this on the training. Get our manual valve out here and hook it into our rod. We got our lineup bolt is here. And a short tin here. The long bolts go here. Short bolt goes there. Eight millimeters go here, here, and here. And the other tins go everywhere else. Alright, plug our EPC in. Put our wiring down. Neutral switches. And tighten those two. Nope.
plug in our input speed sensor, 3-2. The lockup solenoid, we're going to pull that filter out. And throw it away. Ten millimeters on the lockup solenoid. Two O-rings on our uh, PWM solenoid. Plug that in. Our clip. Our detent. You want to make sure it's pretty much in the center of the rooster comb when you tighten it. This is the filter for the TRD. Oh, I forgot my filter seal. Filter seal for the pump. Gasket. All right, I'm gonna have to scrape the gasket off. So this is our pan for the TRD. You know, it's the shape for the drive shaft to come through. These are our pan bolts for that. If you want the rear seal for this. It's special. You have to order it. It will not come in the kit. This is our tail housing O-ring. Fifteen millimeters for that. guy will scrape that gasket off that's his job and he will put a new gasket on for the transfer case
only thing left that I'm going to show you is the lever seal. Let me get this tool off the snap-on truck. I'm sure there's other places that sell it too. Still in. All right, filler tube boot up here. There's a couple of rings down inside the cooler line fittings. And if you get you a scribe that has a little bend to it you can dig those out of there and then just work them back in push them in with your pinky and a scribe and get them in place and then there's the new clips to hold those in other than that we're done with this unit <laughs>